This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Paper F7, Chapter 23, IS, Property, Plant and Equipment. The issues dealt with in IS 16, the principal issues, are timing and recognition of an item of property, plant and equipment, the determination of the carrying amount, and the depreciation charge to be recognised. The IS does not apply to forests and similar regenerative natural resource, nor does it apply to minerals, oils and similar non-regenerative natural resource. Residual value is the net amount which the entity expects to obtain for an asset at the end of its useful life after deducting the expected costs of disposal, but that's surely F3 revision. A fair value the amount for which an asset could be exchanged between knowledgeable willing parties in an arm's length transaction. Carrying amount is the amount at which an asset is recognised in the statement of financial position after deducting any accumulated depreciation and accumulated impairment losses. And an impairment loss is the amount by which the carrying amount of an asset exceeds its recoverable amount. The IS says that we should recognise an asset when it's probable that the future economic benefit will flow to the entity and the cost of the asset can be reliably measured. Remember, an asset is an item which arises, which is under the control of the company as a result of from some past event and from which the company will enjoy an inflow of future economic benefits capable of reliable measurement. The benchmark treatment states that assets should be carried at cost, less accumulated depreciation, and cost includes purchase price, import duties, non-refundable purchase taxes like VAT, but is net of trade discounts and rebates. Cost also includes expenses directly attributable to bring the asset to its current location and condition. Examples of items to be capitalised would include site preparation costs, delivery and handling costs, installation costs and professional costs of, for instance, engineers and architects, but also the estimated costs of disassembly and site restoration. We had in the chapter dealing with contingencies and provisions, we had the example of a nuclear power station which required to be disassembled at the end of 20 years. Today's estimated cost of disassembly, projected into 20 years and discounted to today, will be the amount of the disassembly costs which we would need to capitalise. That's what this bit of the notes is saying. Subsequent expenditure should only be recognised as an asset when, as a result, there's an improvement in the asset's standard of performance. I said here, modifications which extend the asset's useful life, but you know, I'm not totally sure about that. Simply just by extending its useful life does not improve the performance of the asset. So I'm going to put a little query against that one. Upgrading an asset to improve its performance, that certainly is a capitalizable element. And there's a uh, potential for strong arguments from, for instance, the Inland Revenue, where an accountant may classify uh, an item of outgoing of cash as being a repair, the revenue may claim and say, no, this is not a repair, this is an improvement to the asset, and therefore it should be capitalised. I remember having a long argument, which I eventually substantially won, a long argument with Inland Revenue, where a client of mine was claiming items as repairs, and the revenue said, no, these are capital items. Of £30,000 worth of invoices which the revenue investigated, only one was eventually queried successfully by the revenue and only part of it where a window had been taken out of a, a house belonging to my client and had been replaced by a French window, a French door. So he was not replacing like with like and the revenue were correct in stating that this should have been capitalised, but all the rest were simply repairs. All the rest were replacing like with like, taking out a wooden window frame and replacing it with a wooden window frame, taking out double glazed unit and replacing it with a double glazed unit. These are repairs and therefore are not subject to being capitalised, 
whereas if we take out a wooden window frame and replace it with a plastic window frame, then that is not replacing like with like, and it should be capitalised. The allowed alternative, the revaluation model for PP, subsequent to initial recognition at cost, PP can be carried at a revalued amount, but only if fair value can be reliably determined. Revalued amount is the fair value at the date of revaluation, less subsequent accumulated depreciation and impairment losses. Revaluation should be carried out regularly, but there's no indication of just how regularly. Recommendation would normally be no more than three year intervals. Accumulated depreciation at the revaluation date should either be restated proportionately, for example if we are using indexes, or it should be eliminated in accounting for the revaluation. Double entry on revaluation. Reduce the accumulated depreciation account until it's down to zero. And if there's any left, any revaluation left, then debit the PPE. And the credit entry will go to the revaluation reserve. That revaluation reserve may either be transferred to retained earnings when the asset is sold, or it is seen as good practice proportionately to transfer to retained earnings throughout the remaining life of the asset. Because the asset has now been increased in value, it's therefore suffering an increased depreciation charge, and so the transfer to retained earnings will cancel or eliminate or compensate for that increased depreciation charge. Fair values. Land and buildings market value should be determined by professionally qualified valuers. The PPE market value should be determined by appraisal, and if there is no recognised market, uh, then the asset should be valued at depreciated replacement cost.